The worst thing you can do is sit down and say, what time is it where I was? Because it doesn't matter, you just got to work and sleep. Get your sleep when you can. I slept for seven hours on the plane. Joshua slept for 12 hours on the plane from Saudi Arabia. It was the most mind-blowing experience I've ever had in boxing. It was uh, crazy. Didn't take Bob's edible? No, I, I like the interview. I like, I'm not, it's not really my thing, but I think the way he's going at 87, I think I need to get on the edibles. Right? I, don't, I don't even know what they are, but it sounds great. Eddie, who, the, who has more pressure to win this fight, Joshua? Do you know, yesterday, the press conference yesterday was so fascinating because both guys, I felt, looked a little bit nervy. I mean, don't forget yesterday, we were in a country that neither men have been before. You know, n never staged a mega fight. I mean, it was just the most remarkable thing I've ever seen. And both guys, I think they were a little bit nervous, whether they admit it or not, because it was a whole new experience. And, you know, Ruiz had a little air of, not arrogance, but confidence about him. Joshua reminded me of a little bit how he reminded me in the early days, you know, just a little bit more edgy than he used to be. Um, it had a lot more edge than the first press conference because the first press conference had no edge. I mean, he gave him his belts, you know. And, jo and Ruiz looked like a competition winner. And um, yesterday, you know, Ruiz travelled, looked, behaved like a champion. Um, and I think Joshua, again, whether he admits it or not, wants this challenger mentality in his fight. In terms of who's got more pressure, well, I don't know. I mean, for Joshua, it's a must-win fight. For Ruiz, you know, I don't know whether the mentality, you know, he's, he's obviously got a huge amount of money over two fights. Does that take the edge off? Does that take the hunger off? Or does that drive him on to want more and to be in bigger fights? Because if Ruiz wins this fight, he's the biggest star in boxing. You know, and if Joshua wins the fight, he, he probably is. And then, you know, you start talking about the fights that we talked about, you know, non-stop for... 18 months. Mm -hmm. Has they um, been underwater now, Not yet, no, no. We're about 12 weeks out, so next, next, few, next few days and weeks. What's the latest on the stadium? Um, being built, underway. I mean, they've got three events there. Um, they've got the Formula E, which is part of the Formula One, which is what they held last year. They had 50,000 attend that event last year. And the new stadium is part of the hospitality sort of uh, arena for Formula One, then they've got our event, and then they've got another major sporting event, which I'm not actually sure they've announced yet, the week after. So, pressure's on. How big is the stadium? 16,000. And Started off at eight, then it was 10. I said, you need to make it much bigger. So they said, how about 16? So what I kind said, of crowd do you think it would be? 16. More of Saudi nationals, or do you feel like there would be some um, English people? We've had a huge amount of interest from Britain, but there's also a lot of expats in Saudi. Dubai is an hour and 45 minutes. And there are so many Brits in Dubai, so many expats in Dubai, they're all going to fly over. I mean, you could tell yesterday at the press conference, it was packed. I mean, that was, and that was media and very special invite only. But what was really nice was at the airport, they were both getting mobbed, you know, by fans. And that was refreshing because I think a lot of the criticism is, oh, you know, what does this country know about boxing? They've got TVs. You know, they watch live sport, they know who Anthony Joshua is, they know who Andy Ruiz is, and for them, the excitement level to be staging an event like this is, is on another level. Do they have the zone though? Not yet, I'm sure they will do soon. <laughs> Eddie, uh, Ruiz looked heavier yeah. yesterday than he mm. was when they fought. Mm. What did you think of that? Uh, it's hard to tell, isn't it? Like, I saw a lot of comments on that. I mean, I saw him this close, and I saw the pictures of him as well. This close, he, did, he looked exactly the same as he did at the first press conference. The pictures, he looked a bit bigger. There's 12 weeks to go. So I expect him to be exactly the same weight as he was for the first fight. I think the benefit that he had for the first fight was he was coming off a win seven weeks before or six weeks before. So he'd just done a training camp. He was already in shape, didn't have time to relax and eat. And, but I asked him the question yesterday at the press conference. I said, People are always, everybody saying, you know, the, the Rolls Royces, the mansions, all the bling. Have you taken your afterball? And he was quite adamant, absolutely not. And you know what? Manny Robles is a great trainer. I don't, I don't believe that Manny would allow him to. He's definitely probably more, he definitely probably, definitely heavier than Manny would probably like him to be. But I guess that's always the case with Andy Ruiz. Can you tell us what was said between both fighters when they stood face to face? For the first time since... Ruiz said, I think... I'm going to mic both guys today because you needed to hear it because it was brilliant. Uh, Ruiz said something like, I know you're going to be ready this time. And Joshua said, make sure you're ready. He 
He said, as I said to you at the last press conference, December 7th, you're only champion until December 7th. And then all the belts go in the air. And then we go to war. And he said, I'll be ready, God's on my side. That's what Ruiz said. It was, it was very intense, and then it was very respectful. <coughs> so we'll see what we get today. Hopefully Andy didn't sleep much on a plane. <laughs> Will there be changes in production and deference to the fact that this is in Saudi Arabia? In other words, will there be women on the production crews or not, or yeah. any other changes? I mean, I couldn't believe, you know, a lot of this, until you experience it, everything's hearsay. A lot of it's hearsay. So, like, we got on the plane yesterday, full of women. Right. So, and you know, dressed in a non-traditional way. This is a direct flight from London to Saudi Arabia. We got there, you know, full of women. But you speak to the guys today. The invitation to this event is open to men, women, everybody. There'll be a number of production, uh, TV production, TV broadcasters at the event live with female production staff. There's codes you have to respect, you know, in terms of the dress and stuff like that. And um, but having experience, again, like last night I went to the event at press conference, so many women there, probably as many women there as men or close to. And having experienced what we experienced last night, like I can say to women travelling, to production teams travelling, you know, but, but this is their opportunity to say to people, you're all welcome. So in that respect, you're all welcome. What type of security measures do you have in place? This is probably the safest place I've ever been to. Last, I mean, they went rather OTT, Randy Ruiz, because of his comments. And he had personal security. He had um, army as well there. You know, we had beautiful hotels, security on the floor, on the lobby, on your floor. Because, this, again, this is their opportunity to say, to showcase to the world. So they wanted to make sure that Andy Ruiz was happy. As far as I was concerned, the security was ridiculously over the top, but that's what they wanted to put in place to make sure all the teams were comfortable.